Those are the automotive reviews. Today, we're going to talk about Bronco Racing Teams. Now, Ford builds new off road racing teams with Bronco. Now, back in 1969, off road racing legend Rod Hall won a grueling Baja 1000. Uh, desert race outright in a modified Ford Bronco built by Bill Stroppi. Last year, on the 15th anniversary of that win, Ford hoped to relive its past glory with a new Bronco R, a purpose built racing prototype that, while not strictly based on the production Bronco that debuted earlier this year, made use of plenty of its parts. That included the powertrain from the turbocharged EcoBoost engine right down to the 10 speed automatic transmission transfer case and front differential the 2019 bronco r's triad baja win was unfortunately an unrelenting catastrophic catastrophe the suv sustaining heavy damage and multiple parts failures do more to bad fortune than anything but now Ford will have a chance to do this all over again. Ford has just filed to trademark the name Bronco Rough Riders in the US covering entertainment services and the nature of automobile racing, suggesting that Ford is ready to have another go at off-road racing like the Baja 1000. And the Ford is feeling so bold, the world famous Dakar Rally, the racing program, appears to fit well with Ford overall strategy at the moment. Which in the US includes a pivot away from car segment and toward truck crossover and SUVs. Like the 2021 Ford Bronco, the hotter, more profitable parts of the Ford's business is also makes sense as a replacement for Ford's terminated GT racing programs and IMSA and FIA Sports. Car racing, which produced a Le Mans win in 2016 and an IMSA manufacturer's title two years later, but seems significantly less relevant now that Ford has X. Most of his car, most of his... Uh, car products lying in the United States. The Bronco Rough Riders moniker is in the same styling as the Ford Rough Riders, an off-road racing group in the early 1990s that consisted of numerous teams driving in several classes with Ford factory support. The effort produced more than 20 drivers and manufactured championships, titles over five years, and gave Ford a chance to develop and refine new chassis and powertrain components. There is of course no guarantee that the new trademark will actually be put to use. But seeing as Ford Motorsport engineers probably have an awful lot of free time these days, we suspect the Bro Bronco Rough Riders will become a reality. Now Ford surprised a lot of people by entering the Bronco prototype in that uh, Baja 100 race. Now as a marketing strategy it paid off. Even if it failed to finish the race, people kept talking about it for a long time, even though they weren't good things. Ford communications manager, Mike Levine, had tweeted after the Bronco R unsuccessful stint that Ford will be back for next year event. And guess what? The company is staying true to his words. Ford recently admitted that the automaker is open to selling the Bronco R as a turnkey project truck to race teams as long as people are willing to buy it. Will it be successful in a second attempt? We'll have to see about that. The Bronco R couldn't finish the race 
and kept fighting off various issues throughout. But this time around, the company has had a whole year to repair and fix all the mistakes made at last year's event. Hadai Tang, for Chief Product Development and Purchasing Officer, said, Muscle car and trucks that the Bronco could be sold to other teams, he said. If they're interested, we'll look into it. We've done that with our Mustang and even our GTs. The Bronco R is essentially a production spec version of the off-roader, but with several Baja specific parts. Since it competed in the Class 2 category at last year's event, it gave manufacturers a high degree of freedom to develop the Bronco in the best way possible. Last year's prototype gave us a glimpse of the then up and coming 2021 Bronco, but this time around, there is nothing to hide. So you can expect it to be bolder, louder this year. Ford is not new to the building race specific cars. Hatai Ting referred to Ford Mustang GT4 and a GT GTLM racers, which the Blue Oval build together with Multimatic. These racers are certainly not cheap. To give you a perspective, the Mustang GT4 come with a sticker price of $225,000. Even the SCG Baja boot costs well over $200,000. So the Bronco R will also be a lot more expensive than a production spec SUV. While some parts are Baja specific, many things are carried over as well. For instance, the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost. Mail, the 10 speed select shift automatic transmission, the GOAT modes, and even the electric shift on the fly transfer case. As for the stuff that's different and what makes it a serious class 2 division beast, there's a full roll cage composite body panel and a front wheel travel range of 14 inches and a travel and a rear travel range of 18 inches, just to name a few. So in conclusion of the matter, do you think Ford racing teams will opt for the Bronco R, given how well the production Bronco has turned out? Or will they avoid it seeing how it bombed in last year, Baja 1000 race? I personally think that, you know, this is an awesome, this is an awesome thing to boost the uh, Bronco morale. I think this is an awesome thing for them to do it again, because you got to keep going. You don't win by giving up when you fall on your face. You gotta keep going and you gotta stay in the race. So Ford, stay true to the competition and eventually you will be on top. It's a winning team, the Ford Bronco. And it'll be great to be a part of that. This is A Automotive Reviews. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and thanks for subscribing. What an awesome SUV. The Ford Bronco. I think it's great for the brand that they are doing this Baja 1000 again. I think it's really good for it. I think it's good for the um, for the fans. It's going to be something to look forward to. And I wonder how this race spec Bronco is going to look. Two hundred thousand dollars. This is sharp. This is a automotive reviews. 
Thanks for watching. Look at all this gear that they have here. This in the back and in the front. This thing's a beast. You know, you wonder what technically went wrong. Now, I'll look that up and perhaps make another video. What went wrong in the last race? What components broke? We heard that there was a lot of damage, but I wonder what engine parts actually went out. And I wonder what they did to fix it. And I wonder what the future's gonna hold. You know, every time the new car comes out, you always wonder, you know, how it's gonna do in the first two years. But they say it was a lot of uh, damage to the SUV as well. So there must have been some kind of mechanical failures as well. This is A Automotive Reviews. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more interesting videos.